Hi, I'm Bonnie Marquette, and this is the introduction video to the course Tabletop, Macro, and Close-Up Photography for Beginners. So the reason I'm doing this video is I wanted to explain to you a little bit about what the course is about, a little bit about me, a little bit about uh, the type of gear you'll need, and um, why I did this course. And in a nutshell, the reason that I decided to do this course is back when I was a beginning photographer, uh, there was so much information out there that was so way over my head. And so like everybody else, I shot on automatic for a good part of my, uh, of my life, starting as a child. Um, I've since gone on and become a professional photographer, but um, I realize there's so many people out there that want to take good photographs, but the, te the terminology out there is so over their heads in most cases that they get frustrated and they just give up. This course is designed, as the name implies, it's for beginners, but the people that can really uh, benefit from this is everybody from someone who just wants to take a picture of their kids and their dog or a flower in the yard or whatever your interest may be. It's also very, can be very beneficial for someone who has, say, like an online store. Um, or who has uh, some type of product or service that they would like to market and would like to get better images to promote that. For example, say you sell uh, pine cones on Etsy or eBay or what have you for Christmas or for um, crafts or something like that. And most people would take a typical photograph like this. And yes, that is me in the reflection in the mirror. This is a terrible photograph, but you see these all over the place. And my intention is to teach you to take photographs like these. Now, which one do you think would sell better? That's a no-brainer. Uh, you don't have to have a big studio. You don't have to have big fancy lights. We're not even going to use any kind of flash in this course. Uh, there won't be any math. It's going to be very plain English type of instruction to kind of things you may have heard but you weren't quite sure what they meant or how to, how to get them into the images that, that you're shooting. Um, it's going to be very laid back and I have, I'm also a huge animal lover so um, I have a lot of animals. So during the course of the classes you're, I'm sure you're going to be, he be hearing dogs barking. I have eight English Mastiffs, yes eight, and a rescue puppy. They're very large, so my house is always dirty. There's always puffs of hair floating around, so I make no excuses because I love living in the country. I have a parrot, Rishu, who chatters every time he hears me talk, so he will be chattering throughout all of the, the, uh, the lessons. Uh, cockatiel, I have horses, I have a peacock, I have uh, chickens, a cat, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it's, it's a very laid-back course. And again, um, I do all of this right from my home. Just so it's the point is, is that you can shoot whatever you want from your home. You don't have to have a gazillion dollars worth of equipment or big setups or the, the big strobe lights that you see um, to get started. I'm going to show you what you need and you're going to be really surprised at what it is because it's not much. So this is the camera that I use. This is a Canon 5D Mark II. Back about five or six years ago, it was the biggest and baddest on the market. It's not anymore. It's very, it was very expensive uh, when it first came out. It was um, worth it for me to invest in it because, because since I am a pro uh, photographer uh, and the uh, lens that I'm using is a macro lens. It's a Tamron. It's not as expensive as, say, the Canon macro lenses would be, but it's still pretty expensive. So this whole setup is probably, or cost me at the time, probably about three or $4,000. Really expensive, although... It, um, it does the, the work that I need it to do, but you don't have to have something like this, especially when you're starting out. How I started out was with this little thing, which is a Nikon. It's a D90. It's probably about 10 or 12 years old now. This is considered an entry-level DSLR, digital single lens reflex camera, is what that stands for. This is what most people will probably be using. Um, so... Typically, this is probably, again, what most people, if they've, they've gone past the little point and shoot, which we'll talk about next, this is usually what they uh, advance to is something like this. Great learning or a great camera to start with. I actually learned, started to shoot macro with this camera and uh, with another camera that I'm actually filming on right now uh, using something called extension tubes, which I'm going to show you here in just a minute. But this is another. This is a step down from this camera. 
pro camera, entry level D DSLR, or they call it prosumer, I believe. They have a lot of different types of terms. Don't worry about it. Um, then we have the cute little point and shoots. This is a Nikon AW100. I think I paid $120 for it about five years ago off Amazon because it has the ability to shoot and videotape underwater. And my husband and I went to the Bahamas, so I wanted something like that to take with me, small and put it in your purse, whatever. This little thing is amazing. It has shot some incredible photographs. It's got a great zoom on it. Um, and it's, it's pretty clear to be a little point and shoot. So a lot of people may be shooting with this. If you are shooting with this, I'm gonna have some tips and tricks on how to get the best images out of something like this if you don't have something big and bad like this. Because again, you don't have to have that to get really good shots. Then of course, we all have these, um, our smartphones. Now this isn't the biggest and baddest iPhone. This is an iPhone 8, I think, or something like that. I know the newer ones in the Androids have uh, portrait settings in the phones now with the cameras where you can actually blur the background and, and things like that. That's called depth of field. You're going to learn about that. If all you have is this, that's fine. You can start with this. Whenever I talk about a point and shoot, which essentially is what this is, uh, it's going to be talking about pretty much these two things. So if all you're using is an iPhone or an iPad or something like that, start out with that. Um, will this shoot as good an image as this? No. But it'll still shoot some pretty good images. So we'll, uh, we'll discuss that further as we get into uh, the different lessons. So the first thing you need is a camera, which you probably already have or you wouldn't be taking this course anyway. So, <laughs> so one of these, you have to have one of these. You have to have a camera. The second thing you're going to need are these cool little things. These are uh, clips. And uh, you can get them online. You can get them at the hardware store. Um, Home Depot, whatever, buck fifty, something like that. We use these all the time. These things, I, they hold up boards, they hold up flowers, they hold up, you name it. These are indispensable. Photographers are always using these. They're cheap. Um, you can get them online on Amazon. Like these are these are considered photography clips. They're made. They're actually look just a little bit prettier than these. These are heavy, but something in this range. Get them cheap. You almost can't have too many of these. I have about 20 of them. I wish I had more. I use them all the time. The next thing you're going to need is, other than sunlight, which is free, you're going to need a light source like a flashlight. So in some cases, we'll be using, uh, or in most cases, we'll be using um, natural light or available light. I'm going to explain to you what all that, all that is. But if there's something in an image that you really want to add more light to, that uh, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about with these boards, but if there's something in your image you want to add more light to, these things are cool. This little flashlight cost me, say, say I wanted to light up the side of that camera, obviously you can see the difference. Um, this little thing cost me, um, it, was, it was probably about four or five dollars. The nice thing about this, if you don't have a flashlight and you want to invest in one, is this is one of those telescoping ones. So in other words, if I pull it out, it makes a little bitty tiny, I don't know if you can see it, a little bitty tiny uh, light source. If I pull it back, it makes a wider light source. And that's really cool. The pine cone image that I showed you at the beginning of this um, introduction video was actually shot using this uh, flashlight with no other light. So the last thing uh, that is going to be necessary for this particular course is something like this. This is a, um, I'm not saying it's an art board. It's a foam core art board. I get them from the dollar store for a dollar. This is back when you're in elementary school, junior high, or whatever, and the, the teacher would have you put things on a board. We used to use poster board. But now they make them in foam core. They're great because they're rigid. And we need a white one or a few white ones, if they're only a buck, and a black one. Why is that? First lesson. So, if I'm the object, heaven forbid, of your image, and you're saying, well, I want to add a little more light over here. If I do this, do you see how it added light to the side of my face? So, without the board, and with the board. And what you're going to learn is every object reflects, even skin. 
basically what this does is that if you're, again, if I'm the object, heaven forbid, and there's too much light on my face here, now look at the difference. That's all it does, is it stops the amount of light coming in. There's other uh, little tips and tricks that I'm gonna show you to, to soften this light, but basically that takes the light away or reduces it, and that adds it. So that's your first lesson. Now the next thing we're gonna talk about are um, some other things that you can add to your, your library, your arsenal of photography. If you choose to, you don't have to, to do the course and to learn from it, um, but there are some fun things. They're not really terribly expensive, so I just wanted to show them to you to kind of give you um, an idea about them and, and what they're used for and how they can kind of help, um, uh, help with your images. So one of the coolest gadgets that you can get to get started in macro and close-up photography are these little things. These are called extension tubes. And what they are is uh, there's no lens or there's no glass. They're just uh, hollow tubes. And what they do is they move your, the lens of your camera away from the sensor in, <clears throat> inside your camera, excuse me, which actually magnifies the images that you're shooting. So it's a, it's a great way to start. This is how I started. If you, you can try these out so you can get closer and um, to your objects and to your images and shoot closer as long as you can take the lens off of your camera body. So if you can take the lens off your camera body, like this, and these things stack so you get a, no thank you, I don't need your help. So you can get a different, um, amount uh, you can use. They come in three, I believe. Typically they come in three different sizes, if you will. So all you do is you take them, you mount them on your camera, then you mount, this is Sosi, another one of my masters. You mount your lens on that extension tube, and then now you've magnified, if this was just a regular, this is a macro lens, so now it's super magnified, but if this was just a regular lens that you could do that with, now you have kind of a simulated macro lens. Now this, is, this set is by Photodix. They're about 50 bucks on Amazon. Probably the most um, popular brand is called Kinko's. And they're third party um, manufactured, which means that uh, Can Canon makes them, Nikon makes them, those are very, very expensive. But to get started, you can get um, either these sweater dips for about 50 bucks. The Kinko's, I believe, are about 130. And the main thing that you want to look for, though, if you're going to go ahead and invest in these, is that if they're, they have the AF, which is autofocus ability. They make some that you, they're just plastic. You stick them on the front. You can't communicate with your camera. It's a real uh, difficult, pain-in-the-butt way of trying to use them. But if you get the ones that have AF like this, like the Photo Dicks for 50 or the Kinko's for about 130, it has the little sensors that when you put it on the front of your camera, you can still, if your camera will still autofocus, you can still adjust things like aperture, um, shutter speed, or whatever it is that you want to do, and shoot like you have a close up or a macro lens. And these are a lot of fun. It's a really cheap way to get started. The next thing is, as I told you, you know, we can have, we need a little flashlight or something like that. If you want, you can get these again on Amazon. You tell I shop on Amazon all the time. These are really cool. These are the new LED lights, although this is a couple years old. What's nice about them is they're cheap. Uh, this one is dimmable, so I can turn it up, turn it up, I can turn it down, and they stay cool. If you're using a regular like light, uh, just like a light bulb in a, a desk lamp, which I do actually use a lot, but they get, you know, they get hot where you can't touch them. These things, you can run them all day long. This one's battery operated. You know, it, it's portable. It's small. I can take it anywhere. I use it a lot. And um, they're really neat. Um, they're not terribly strong, but usually for tabletop, you don't need a whole, you don't need that strong of a light anyway. This is a little mini uh, tripod, again, that I got off Amazon. I'm not getting paid by Amazon, I just shop there a lot. <laughs> it's a little cowboy studio tripod thing and you can put lights on it, you can hang stuff on it, you can clip things on it, whatever, but it's a little mini tripod. As well as these little cool things. Again, Amazon, cheap. It's got a little thing that you can screw a light onto or put something on or what have you, it can grab onto things. These are really cool. 
they're cheap. They're Gorilla, uh, Gorilla Grips or something like that. I forget. There's different brands, but these are kind of cool to have. Another thing that comes in handy is painter's tape. Um, I usually keep have it in white or black. If I'm using them on my boards, you saw I had some blue tape on it from um, the earlier section. Tape is invaluable. This is cheap dollar store, but take the boards together. You can, if you have an object on your tabletop or something you're shooting that, say, keeps falling over, take a little piece of tape, stick it. No, let's do this one. So here's your object, keeps falling over. So a little piece of tape under it. There, you got a prop. It's propping it up. This little thing is cool. This is called a third arm. When I first started in Macro, I used this all the time. It's a little thing that sits on the, your desk or wherever you're shooting. It's got these cool little clamp things here um, that can hold objects. It's got a magnifying glass you can shoot through. This one even has a little LED light. So uh, there's a picture of a flower that's... Um, going to be in one of the lessons that I actually propped up. The flower was that tall, I believe, and lit it up with this little light, shot with my, actually my old lens with uh, extension tubes on it, and got this little tiny flower that was that big, and it looks like it's that big, and it's really cool looking. These are reflectors. They're photography reflectors. You probably see people that, uh, particularly photographers, that do weddings. They weren't, they, they weren't just the same as your white and black boards. Except these are really cool. This is a real small one, which I like for tabletop. I do have a really big one if I do portraits or something larger. But these are really neat. Uh, and the small ones are cheap. Again, they have a gold side if you want to reflect light onto something to make it warm. They have white. They have silver. They have black. And then they also have what's known as a diffuser, which you're going to learn about. All a diffuser does is it's like a, a semi-opaque type of... Um, uh, material that if you're getting too much light on your subject you put it between the light and the subject and it just knocks that light down a little bit just like that but if you don't feel like going and buying a pre-made photography diffuser you can make your own I made this for this is a um, air conditioning vent filter I got it at either the dollar store or one of the home improvement stores or whatever for about two or three bucks. I put some black tape around it. So now, if for whatever reason I don't have my little fancy little small diffuser and I need to diffuse some light to stop the light from hitting this object that's shiny and so bright, I can use this and it does the same thing and made it myself. Almost everything that we use, you can just about make yourself. This is my favorite tripod in the world. It uh, actually, well, it's made for macro, at least I think it is. This thing, this boom here, will come up and then lay over like that. The reason that's cool is because you can be outside shooting flowers, want to be right over them, but don't want to have to bend your, your, uh, your back and stuff like that, as well as tabletop. This is fantastic. So this is a quick tour of my uh, big studio, which is also known as my living room, <laughs> of course. Um, this is the desk you've seen me uh, in front of, and I do a lot of shooting on here with the big windows. And then the rolling cart that I converted, uh, I believe a $5 purchase from the thrift store, that is now doubles as a shooting surface. And this is a piece of um, Live Edge Driftwood, uh, Cypress Live Edge Driftwood that I got from a friend of mine that also makes a really cool shooting surface. And then over here... This little table, I actually shot a really cool shot of some pretzels on this thing. And uh, just using the light from the window, just that tiny little table. So here's my dining room table. I do a lot of shoots here. I uh, just did one recently of a chili shoot. And that's Layla, my little rescue puppy, and Jula, one of my mastiffs. Our mom's Sosi out on the back steps there. And um, I do a lot of shooting, uh, predominantly a whole bunch, most of maybe I would say, on this table. The uh, cabinets in the back are where I keep all of my props, so everything's all right in one close area. I can grab them very easily. And I just, um, the shot that I did with the chili, I used the, the lights that are over this table. I didn't use any additional lights but those, and that's this shot.
And by changing the color of the light bulbs, I can get some really, uh, really neat effects. Enjoy shooting. Um, and remember every shot is, every photograph is a good photograph because you took the time to take it. And hopefully we'll uh, get you to where those good shots or those good photographs, images, will become uh, even better and at some point great images.